Hey you guys, my name is Miles and I'm your new Tuesday guy. And this week's topic is chest finding. And the theme for this week is pets. My pet's being really grumpy right now. He can be a real prick. This is Miles. He's pretty grumpy. I woke him up just to show you guys his cute little face. He's huffing and puffing. He's pissed. Say hi to YouTube, Miles. You're gonna be famous. You're gonna be famous. Yeah, you are, buddy. You're gonna be famous. Look at your little cute face. Show off that little cute face of yours. Yeah, that little cute. Oh, he's shy. He's camera shy. Oh, he's camera shy. He's trying to hide his little face. I'm gonna go and continue without Miles. Um, so the chest finder I wear is the 997. It's a size small. It's from Underworks. This is what it looks like. This is a binder that I wear. Um, it's got one layer in the back and two layers in the front. I don't think you're gonna find any binder in the planet that's comfortable to wear. This binder, the relationship I have with my binder is definitely a love-hate relationship. Of course, when I'm wearing my binder, I do feel a lot more comfortable in public because I really cannot leave my house without a binder on. Even if it's to like the gas station to pick up milk or something, I won't leave unless I have my binder. The thing about binders is you're always gonna hate them, but you're always gonna love them. This can be a real lifesaver. Um, like I said, I can't leave my house without my binder on. Specifically, this binder, it does roll up on you. Um, I am, however, a bigger guy, so I'm not sure if it rolls up for smaller, thin guys. Um, I can only say, being a chubby guy, that this does roll up. This is uncomfortable. Um, it's recommended that you don't wear them for more than eight hours, but of course, you know us, we break those rules to feel comfortable with ourselves. I've worn this binder, I think, uh, 16 hours maximum. The most often I've ever worn my binder was when I was on vacation at Disneyland. I was out every single day, and every single day I was out, I was out until 12 in the morning. So, yeah, 16 hours, I would wear this binder. I did not take any breaks. I did, however, it became really unbearable. One of the days I decided to stay in the hotel because it was becoming way too much for me. I started having really bad back pains and my stomach was killing me. I couldn't breathe and I couldn't eat. Um, I, it made me physically sick wearing this way too much. So I do advise you to definitely take breaks, whether it be for an hour, whether it be for an entire day or more. You do need breaks when you bind your chest because I was miserable that week. A tip, don't ever even try to put your binder on when your body is wet. Whether it be water or sweat, don't even bother because it's gonna it's gonna be hell. Another thing, I have gone swimming in this binder. Um, I usually choose a swimming binder. I have, right now I only have two binders. The one I have on right now is the one that I will go swimming with and the one that I use basically every single day. This one is a lot tighter, and it is a lot newer than the one I have on. The one that I have on is, I think, a two, two and a half years old. Two to two and a half years old. This one, since it's a lot tighter, I it's the same size, but it's a lot tighter because it's not all worn out. I use this one if I need extra binding, and if I need to make sure that I'm absolutely flat. I use this one usually when I'm dressing up, um, or special occasions. Trying to get out of a binder after swimming... It's just as, actually, it's a lot easier than putting it on after a shower or being sweaty. But it's still pretty difficult to get off your body after you've been swimming. So a word of advice is to be completely dry before you even bother to put this on. When you first start binding your chest, um, put it on for an hour and then take it off and then try two hours and take it off, three hours and take it off until you're used to a uh, chest binder. It does roll up. When it rolls up, it hurts.
it hurts uh, my legs and my thighs. Sometimes it can cut off my circulation and my legs end up hurting for an entire night. Or my hips, I've had like indentation on my hips because it rolls up. I've bled over here underneath my arm pits before because it's pretty tight right there. Um, so be careful with that too. I've heard of guys who like put uh, socks, like thin socks or tissue right there at the pits so it doesn't hurt you too bad. Yeah, take it easy when you first start binding because it's going to take some time to get used to. If you don't have a chest binder and you want to bind, I highly, highly, strongly, very strongly encourage you to not use bandages. Don't use anything that isn't meant to bind your chest with because it can really screw up your insides. Um, even binding with uh, proper chest binders, it does, it can screw you up. Um, eventually, it, it will catch up to you and you'd have to get top surgery. Um, I can't really think of any trans guy who wouldn't want top surgery. I guess if your chest is small enough that you don't need a binder. But if you do need a binder and you use one, you will eventually really need to get top surgery because um, this does cause some stretch marks and um, it can move things around. If you're going through puberty and you're still growing and you start binding your chest, your ribs can actually grow inward and um, your spine can become all, you know, unaligned and everything. So I really do uh, warn you to be careful with chest binders, even if you have a proper one, because it's, it's not supposed to be like that. Your body isn't supposed to handle being bound hours every single day. So do take it easy. Um, that's all the advice I have, really. So, I'll see you guys next week. Miles says bye. You woke me up for this. Seriously. Seriously, Dad. I'm pissed. I'm pissed, man. I'm out of here.